And we're back, and uh, for this segment, we're going to let the candidates ask the questions of each other. So, uh, Rob, i give you the honors of starting this off, okay. asking a question of... Okay. Thank you. One thing I've asked throughout this campaign is that we, and I, as I've talked to the residents in the community, that we be careful of what the state might do to us to balance their budget. Knowing now, it's been out in the press even more vocally recently, the leaders of both houses, both parties have been saying the same thing. We're going to have to cut and we're going to have to uh, give you unfunded mandates on local government. So knowing that's coming down the pike, what would you do, Karen, to help balance our budget in the face of the state coming after some of our resources? First of all, public safety has to be a high priority in terms of how we balance our budget. So that's a, that's a high priority. Then I would look to the department heads who in this last round and, and again in the next round would keenly um, go through their budgets and I would um, uh, pay close attention to how and what they're doing in terms of dealing with that, including their dealings with the unions and all of that to try and pencil and make everything work. Um, I would also look into grant opportunities, things of that nature, which are available in terms of helping to provide services within our community that have previously been city funded. It's out, the money is out there to be utilized, and so I would look at that very closely as well. And again, I go back to the fact that with these government layoffs coming on, that is where I feel that Carson City needs to create its own, own kind of economy where we can provide for services and not be so affected um, with these state budgets. We have to recreate ourselves. Okay. Um, now, let's go the other way. Do uh, you have a question for Rob? Yes, I do. Um, Rob, what is your stance on education and its um, play in this, um, in this economy? And with budget cuts, as you just discussed with me, that's going to be hugely affected. So how do you feel that plays into Carson City's economy? I think it's very, very important. I think it's very sad that we again lost out on the race to the top funding for the state. We did get some money for local school districts, so that's a plus that will go right into our school districts. Uh, I think it's very fortunate that we have a college here that works very closely with NNDA, the Northern Nevada Development Authority, and other economic development programs like the state, that they will immediately respond to syllabus training for a new industry coming in. We've had many examples of that we've worked with where we bring an industry in. One thing lacking in our community, unfortunately, are skilled labor. They will help get your people up and running. So that's a win-win. It brings resources to the table, brings an industry in, and it brings resources for the training. So education is, is uh, number one. We we've have done better than most in the state and our school district in coming out on top. Uh, that's something to be applauded. It's still not the best. We're still ranked lower nationally, but I think we have the beginnings here of a great program. We have great administrators in our school district. We have great board members, and uh, I think it's number one. All right. Thank you. Okay. Now, I'll uh, go back to you. Uh, question for Karen. Okay. Um, I want to know, uh, in the past, and again, I, I, I have to hit on this because I've been looking at your website and looking at your Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, you've changed your stance on the project. I think it's great. But on I asked on the, the project, the, the city center project. Right. Never changed. Well, I could quote you here, and I, I, I could uh, if we have time in a larger uh, forum, but you have qualified your statements, which I think is to be applauded on that regard that it's not an absolute. It's no longer just blind faith. We have to do this. Before we even knew the details of the project, you were saying we have to do this. Now you're qualifying that saying only if the resources come in and it looks like it could pencil. Why did you change your mind? And do you think that showed good leadership and judgment in having to go all in before you saw your cards and now you're having to draw back and reassess your position? I think I'm a lot closer to the information as far as what's going on within this project. That's why I feel so strongly about it. Mm -hmm. And I feel that my position really has never changed. You know, I always want to see how things pencil out before I'm going to be gung-ho. But the concept of this project, in terms of the, the heart and the job creation and the education component that the library can provide is huge to our economy. Because considering the fact that um, when businesses want to relocate here, whether it be in the manufacturing sector or whatever, we're in competition with New Mexico, Colorado, and Utah. 
and our, we have a lower tax base, but when they look at the quality of our education, they find it lacking and they go elsewhere. So, as far as I'm concerned, the, what this project brings to the table is hugely important for this community because it gives us a chance to bootstrap ourselves out of this down economy. Okay. Uh, and one more question from you to Rob. Um, you made a comment and uh, that you thought that this was one of the, um, the finances behind this project were the mo were the or the actually the project itself was the most poorest planned of any project that you'd ever looked at. Why do you say that? For many reasons. Uh, if you looked at that presentation they did to us a month or so ago, mm -hmm. uh, the monolithic buildings, the big, huge boxes on top of our state capitol building, you know, right across the street from the capitol on Musser, right up against the street. There was no stepping down to the streetscape. When we've done our downtown master plans, and I wrote the first one for the city back in the early 90s, we talked about the rhythm and scale of the, of the district. The, the, the buildings. You don't contrast, conflict with that architecture you have and the, the scale of the buildings. You work within it. So for example, what you would do in this project is start in the middle and work down towards the streets. They didn't do that. You have huge monolithic buildings that would house several functions that we just care about the learning center. If the rest of it goes bust, we're left holding the bag on that. And now you're in with a partner. That partner can walk away. Unfortunately, the city can't walk away from their own resource. So it's very poorly designed. Some of the folks that night pointed out the shading effect. They hadn't even considered the shade, the freeze thaw in our winter on that plaza they were proposing. Big, tall building shading that north elevation. Just very poorly conceptualized. The parking arrangements, all of it was just very poorly done from my point of view as a city planner. All right. Well, I want to thank you both for coming on and talking to us. And thank you for tuning in. Catch us next time on Our Town at Common Coffee. The Carson Mall has fantastic food. All this and more at the Carson Mall.